Yep, Andy. Well, there was a very poignant occasion. I think that uh, it was really everything I expected it to be. I thought the way that the the FA and the French FA set up the the uh, what can we call it? I don't know that ceremony is the right word, but the the remembrance service, if we call it that, before the game started. I thought that was that was very very well done. I thought the players getting together for the for the minute silence, the staffs of the two teams getting together. All the things that we wanted to achieve, I thought were achieved in, in, in that moment there. And then, of course, people had to put that aside and play a game of football, you know, two, two good teams, in my opinion, and uh, leave that side behind because once the whistle blows, it all became about the actual game of football itself. And that turned out to be a, a good evening for us because we played well and won the game. OK. Yeah, they cope with it very well. I mean, the fact is, players do cope with things, don't they? And you know, there's, I think that the interesting thing this evening was that this game attracted 71,000 people, which is quite incredible for a friendly match. Probably a bit more if, if some had maybe not decided to stay away for, for, for fear. Not so much, I don't think, for fear of security. Possibly because they knew there was going to be a lot of checks and whatever, and maybe were a bit concerned that they would be held up either in traffic or at the stadium. But 71,000 is a great crowd. I thought that they played their part in respecting the ceremony and played their part also in, in helping our team to perform as it did. OK. No, it's uh, Neil. Neil, Neil Ashton. Mm. I thought they played very well. I thought the first half in particular was as good as I've seen us play here at Wembley for a long time. I thought we played with a lot of authority, a lot of composure. I thought the movement and the passing was good. We, we were constantly a, a threat when we had the ball and I thought we defended well we didn't have the ball. And these two games eventually have given me what I, what I wanted to see. In the Spain game I saw for 70 minutes a team which defended extremely well and looked quite dangerous on the counter-attack, albeit that we lost in the end. Um, but tonight I saw a different type of opponent, a different type of approach from, 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 from us, and I thought the players handled it very well. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Matt Hughes. Yeah, well, it was as close, Matt, I think, to a faultless performance. I mean, faultless, you can't, you can't get as much of the ball as we had and he had without, I'm sure, missing a pass or a, a tackle from time to time. But I've got to say, I didn't, I didn't at any moment in the game think that uh, he was anything other than, than, than top class. And it is amazing that at that age and, and, and to have no previous experience, really, unless you count those 10-minute... Those Substitute appearances to go in and do what he did tonight, I thought was was quite outstanding. He'll, he'll obviously, I guess, get a lot of praise for that performance. He certainly deserves a lot of praise. And the one thing that I've learned tonight, I've played two back fours, one against Spain, which I thought defended very well. Another one tonight, totally different, also defended and, and played well. And in midfield, where we were and, fr and up front, where we were missing a lot of players, um, we've certainly seen some players who want to say to me. Uh, you might have some names and some big names missing, but you don't have to worry because we're here. And that's, a, that's a, a nice thing, not only for me to know, it's a nice thing for the country to know because we do talk, or sometimes I try to talk and suggest that this group of young players coming through have got potential, they've got talent, they've got a chance. Uh, and tonight, I think they, they, they showed the world that. OK, we take two more questions. Owen Gibson. I did. I felt, and I've already received a, a few text messages from, from some French people that I, that I know or have worked with, and they've been very quick also to point out that they, they thought that the occasion tonight was a, was a very good occasion for their country, 
and the way it was handled was a good uh, thing for their country and I think that we in England can be rightly proud that we were able to put this event on because as we've said or I've said and Martin Glenn has said um, it was the French FA that were the ones who decided the game should go ahead um, it wasn't us pushing them to do it it was them saying we want to do this because as far as we're concerned an act of defiance is more important than uh, the other alternative any more questions yes is, yes far away right were you aware uh, aware of the developments in germany and if yes did that affect you or the team in any way we were aware but um you know wembley's quite secure we we had faith in the security measures being taken here we had faith that this game would go ahead without incident and luckily it did and you know, to make comparisons with other country, countries never actually came into our, into our minds. We were focused on two things, making certain that we conducted the remembrance service in the right way and, and showing the respect, the solidarity, the unity that we really wanted to express. And then we were focused on trying to play a good game of football when that was behind us and the referee blew his whistle and said, now it's time to play. OK, thanks very much, everybody. I wasn't terribly surprised because I think if I'd have if I'd have believed he didn't have that capacity, that capability to play like he did, I don't think I would have chosen him. There were other people that could have could have played. You know, Lalana didn't start, and and uh, John Joe Shirley didn't start. So I'm not totally surprised, no, uh, but because I've seen him do it for Tottenham, and um, it's a bold choice, I suppose. It's a bold uh, decision to bring a guy who's hardly played a match for the under-21s and put him straight into the first team. But I've had good success with that in the past. I've done it with Sterling, I've done it with Barkley, I've done it with John Stones, I've done it with Luke Shaw. Uh, and these are just names coming to the top of my head. There's others that you can, you can, you can write about if you want. So we, we've got some good um, history, if you like, that when we give these players that we really believe in a chance, there's a there's a a good possibility that they'll take that chance and, and, and remain with us and remain a, an important figure. So that's what we hope Delhi will do now. But don't forget, he is 19 years of age. He's only played a handful of Premiership games. He's only played one international game from the start. Um, he's still learning the game. And it would be nice if uh, he gets the chance, if you like, to learn the game without too much... Uh, publicity or, or without too much glare from the spotlights. Okay, thanks very much everybody. Thanks.